Paddy from Odds on FPL here. I'm just going to go quickly through uh, my team and what I'm planning to do. The team's based off of Bucky Odds. I feel it's helpful. Last three seasons, we finished in the top 50k while sharing on Twitter. This year, we're going to do it slightly different. We're going to be sharing on Twitter and on YouTube, and hopefully that will help explain the team better, and it will help you as well if you want to copy the team. Generally, it's quite good, and it's definitely beneficial. Um, first off, I'm just going to say I'd be really grateful if you could subscribe to the channel. As you can see, not even 5% are. Not even 5%. Come on. Um, I, but yeah, I'd be really grateful if you could. You know, every little helps, as Asda says. Shocking joke. But yeah, we're hoping to get 1,000 subscribers before the start of September. It's a big ask, I know. We're not that far away, but generally, it'd be great to have it. Um, so we're just going to go on to last game week. We got 95 points, which in the grand scheme of things is a great score. I'd take that every week if I could. But it only gave us a game week rank of 716k overall, which is crazy when you think about it. A lot of people were getting over 100 points, and congratulations to everybody who did that. Hopefully our team set up quite well going forward. It is quite template because Twitter has made everything so template. But in goal, Sanchez didn't rate him. He looked quite poor against Burnley. He flapped at crosses and it was just a bit worrying. He's somebody who I'm going to have a consideration on going forward. But Brighton's fixtures are quite good, especially in terms of clean sheets and things like that. So in terms of bookies, you can't get rid of him. Same with Cass as well. Four million, played well, six points putting a few decent crosses. Alexander-Arnold, same, same. But the thing is with Trent, he's more nailed on. He'll keep his position longer. Shaw looked okay. Got a yellow card. Sort of disappointed. Harrison wasn't expected to play. He was a bench player. He came in for Chilwell, who didn't start. I still think Chilwell is a better pick than Alonso going forward. But who knows? <laughs> Tuchel's a bit of a fraud. Then there's Fernandez. Fantastic hat trick, what more could you want? Ideally, I would have liked to captain him, but it's only three points in the difference between captaining him and Salah. Salah as well, amazing. He looked in great form, and he looks like he's a great pick going forward. Most expensive player in the game, but well worth it. Gundogan, injured last, like the last millisecond of a game. Like, as in, you couldn't get any more unlucky. It looked like he had really done his shoulder in, but, you know, um, Pep's come out and said he's fit, so... That's great news. A lot of people would be trigger happy and take him out, but no, we've kept him. Oh, maybe I should have told you that after. Um, Antonio, great. He could have got 20 points, man. Uh, then Danny Ings was awful. He scored a penalty, but like his non-penalty goal involvement was almost null. Ivan Tony put in a great shift up top. Was a battering ram. Destroyed Ben White. And like they just targeted him. Tony looks like he's capable at this level. Very, very capable. The The bench, Gunn didn't play, but Norwich are going to concede a lot of goals with Tim Krul in it. And there's a very good chance that Gunn could come in. Chilwell didn't start. I believe he will. Played against Weymouth, where they won 13-0. Uh, he could come back in, but I could also not be surprised if he doesn't. Amarty played, got six points. Annoying on the bench, but you know it was just a short-term pick in case three of the defenders didn't play. Um, then as well, Brownhill surprisingly didn't start. Very surprising. Everybody thought he was. He was one of the most nailed on 4.5 million picks. Just didn't play. So, what can you do? Unfortunately, he's not going to be making my team anyway. It doesn't really matter. So, this game week, uh, we're just going to go on to. And you can see here there's nobody on it because I'm trying to be a bit surprising. Um, in goal, we're going to continue on with Sanchez. Sanchez uh, has like a 45% chance of clean sheet against Watford. Watford looked good, but it also was to do with, you know, target looking awful. They just targeted him. Um, he got subbed off at halftime. Sarah ran riot. They made changes at halftime, but there's the possibility that Watford could return back to what we all expected, and that was a below average side. Brighton, game of two halves there. One, the first half they looked awful, second half they looked good. They won the game, they ground it out, they've got a decent defence, Veltman's still out which is annoying, but Shane Duffy's come in and he's looked good. Uh, in terms of defence, uh, we have Simicast and Trent Alexander-Arnold, there are two defenders with over 50% chance of a clean sheet, which is massive. They both will probably get it against Burnley, 
Simicast as well, and Trent both offer uh, the options, or even the chances of an assist and an attacking output. Shaw as well against Southampton, you could get an assist very, very easily. I don't rate Southampton, I think they've got an awful side. Um, on their right-hand side, they're going to have Livermento or Kyle Walker-Peters. So it's a bit of an unknown there, but you could see chances coming down the left very, very easily. Uh, from there, it's Ben Chilwell against Arsenal. I don't rate Arsenal. They have no attacking output. Like, Lacazette and Elba both have COVID right now, so they won't be available either. So the chance of a clean sheet for Chelsea is only about 38%, but realistically, probably should be higher. In midfield, Bruno Fernandes and Salah. I've gone with Salah. Salah's the bookie's choice. He's got such a high percentage of a goal, over 50%, and he probably will. There's all this talk about him not scoring against Burnley previously, but correlation and causation. He's the most highly percentage probability player this week. You just can't go away from that. Fernandes as well, it's recency bias. It's great in the last game, but so was Salah, and Salah's at home. Home form means a lot in the Premier League. There were seven wins at home in the last game, in the last ten games. I know it's a small amount of a sample size, but historically the Premier League has always had home field advantage. Gundogan as well, he's come out and been told that he's fully fit for the game. So that's great news. I didn't need your come out like a lot of people did. That's something you should always consider. Don't make an early transfer because players can always manage to make themselves fit. Uh, up top, there's Danny Ings against Newcastle. Didn't rate him in the first game. They have so many players out as well. There was news that Bertrand Traore is out and Bailly could be starting on the bench. So they've got a few players who... Oh, and Ollie Watkins as well. So it's a bit of an unknown, but Newcastle look good offensively, but defensively they were shambles. So Ings could get a goal here. As well as that, he was on penalties. Uh, Ivan Tony up top against Crystal Palace. I think you'll see more of the Ivan Tony that you expected again in this game. Could get a goal, but Palace at home. It's hard to know, Vieira. Um, next up is Antonio. Looked immense, but he also looked terrible. Missed the penalty. Scored a goal. Could have had more. Could have had 20 plus points. Great player. He could be a, a little bit of a, a pun for a captaincy pick. Wouldn't do it myself, but for people who are crazy, yeah, go for it. On the bench. Gun. Won't play. Doesn't matter. Uh, Harrison. There was a bit of a question of if I was going to start Harrison. I think with Leeds losing 5-1, I'm not pushed. As well as that, I think Gundogan could start. And it's realistically, if Gundogan doesn't start and Chilwell doesn't start, I'm more than happy with having Harrison there. Amarty may start. I'm not sure. I think with Vestergaard coming in, there's a probability that he'll start ahead of him. But it's a decent 4 million bench option. Then Brownhill will probably get a point off the bench. I thought he was first choice, but he isn't. Anyway, yep, that's my team reveal for the week. Hopefully you've gotten something from this, and yeah, see you next time. Don't forget, like and subscribe.